Welcome to Buddhas in Your Landfill. This, this is very funny because I just recorded this a few minutes ago to discover that the uh, camera had not, I didn't flip the camera so I was actually uh, hearing me but you were looking at the wall on the other side of the camera. So uh, uh, we're, we're live now and this is one of the, uh, this really fits into the risk of being live. Uh, and uh, I wanted to share with you uh, uh, a little course change I'm making, uh, which also includes the errors that I make. And uh, last night I had a very uh, 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 good, uh, happy talk, a uh, happy hour talk uh, at my five o'clock, it's martini time, uh, called The Dancing Man. And it was very spontaneous and it was funny and it was informative. And uh, I really enjoyed it. I really felt at home. So I'm going to return uh, my morning talk more to the spontaneous sharing of Buddhas in our landfill rather than uh, creating a course and a, a theme and, and uh, because it became teaching, you know, and, and with me, teaching can become preaching. And uh, there you go. You lose the uh, spontaneity uh, <clears throat> and you lose the creativity uh, or the liveness in the talk, because when you're not scripted, when you're not reading a teleprompter, when you don't have notes and you don't know where you're going, you have to have several things working for you. First of all, you have to be sensitive uh, to the wind, uh, and you have to have faith that what you're doing is going to uh, go take you home. It's like, kind of like a, a sailing ship. Uh, you have a destination, uh, and uh, you tack with the wind to get to the destination. And if you look at the sailing ship, it's never going towards the de de destination. It's always going a little bit to the side. So it's like a meandering river going to the ocean. It's always going home, but it goes in a meandering way. And we live in a society today where everybody has a motorboat or a car. <clears throat> so we're focused on the goal. We're focused on... Uh, getting there, and we're not sensitive uh, to the meandering and to the tacking with the wind. We're not sensitive to the wind of our life, you see. Um, this clock was <laughs> interesting to me, um, and uh, I just lost my uh, little prop. Here it is. Uh, this clock was on the back porch the other day, and somebody had left it. It was all packaged up, hadn't been opened. And I thought, oh my goodness, that's a clock, how neat. It's an old Roman numeral clock. And so yesterday, <clears throat> last night I put it up on the wall, and this morning it didn't work. And I thought, well, that's interesting. Uh, the clock didn't work. And also this morning, I woke up in my little Buddha necklace that I've been wearing since maybe 2005. I'll show it to you. It's a little jade uh, Buddha, but it's not really a Buddha, it's Kuan Yin. Uh, who is the uh, Bodhisattva of Compassion. And uh, so this broke, and usually when this breaks, it, it really means uh, 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 be sensitive to the wind. So both of these put together, plus uh, my wife had a uh, profile picture, or a picture, took a picture of me the other day, and I put it, made it a profile picture. So I have a really new <clears throat> picture of myself that makes me look uh, younger than 80. So, uh, I, I, I tacked, I'm tacking and moving back towards uh, being uh, more alive in the morning and uh, less teaching and preaching. So we're interested in finding Buddhas in our landfill. In order to find Buddhas in the landfill, we have to become sensitive to the present moment and what the present moment is telling us. In the same way that a sailor is sensitive to the wind when he's in a sailboat. The wind is the present moment, and it's always moving us. We, you know, when a, when a sailboat is in the doldrums, you know you're not moving. But when that first breeze hits the, hits the sail and it moves, you feel something stirring. You feel life coming. It's like the kick of the fetus in the womb. Something is moving. Something is, tur something is stirring. Something is awakening. You see, and so we become sensitive to that, and we steer our life according to these little 
sensitivities, these little feelings, you know, instead of focusing on the future and the goal and plowing toward it, you see. Women and men, we all, we all laugh about this, and uh, the difference between how men and women shop, because when uh, I know when my wife goes shopping, uh, I, I'll sit out in the car and it may take an hour for her to get out of Walmart with a loaf of bread. <laughs> if I go shopping, uh, I go right to the Target, get it and come out and go home. Uh, so there's, there's a, the, the, we can, we can uh, gather, we, we can call, you know, it's, a hunt, it's a gathering things through life, or we can be a hunter and just go for the Target and come back, you see. Uh, do we do we enjoy the process, or do we just live in the future? So when time stopped this morning, and it's not a battery because I put a new battery in it, uh, time stopped. And this is an old clock. It's got new. It's it's uh, got Roman numerals, so it's like a mythological clock to me. You know, it's a it's an old clock, uh, and it stopped, which means. You gotta go live, uh, because when you put down time, you're putting down future, and future is 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 goal thinking, is a plan. So you map a course to the future. So I was mapping a course to the future in my talks, rather than being just here with what's handy. So. Uh, I'm changing course, and I'm just going to move more back to a spontaneous, uh, unplugged talk in the morning. <clears throat> so this is Valentine's Day, <coughs> and uh, <clears throat> I had a few thoughts on Valentine's Day that we can just reflect on. And I wondered today... Why why was there why is there an arrow through the heart? Have you ever thought about that? Why is there an arrow through the heart? And you can imagine drops of blood. This is a wound. Why is there, a, why is the uh, heart of love represented as being shot through by an arrow? There's a wound in love. What is this wound? Now, now Valentine's Day is a celebration of uh, romantic love. And if anybody has ever fallen in love, you will notice that it is a it is a, there is a wound in it. There is a pain in love, uh, the fear of loss, the fear of not being with your beloved. The not being with your beloved is very painful. And if the separation between you and your beloved grows, the pain grows. And there is fear of losing the beloved. Uh, and there is a sense that this romantic love is timeless, that you are in a timeless space. So you don't want to be observed by other people. You don't want to be objectified and caught in your secret grotto, you see, uh, where the lovers are at one with each other, you see. So they, they don't want to be objectified by the camera or by the observing eye that makes them into an object and breaks them out of their entwined love, you see. But this wound, this wound of the, is, is, is one that we don't want to heal. Uh, the wound of love is a combination of joy and pain. Okay? And this combination, of, usually we think when we're in time, we separate the two. When we live in time, we say joy is in the future, I want to get to joy. And pain is right now or in the future or in the past and I want to get away from it. So we separate joy from pain and we go towards joy and we go away from pain. But when we fall in love, they are combined as one. 
And this makes the ecstasy of love. It's the combination of these contradictory uh, feelings, uh, these contradictory states of pain and joy become one in, a, in an elixir. Uh, this is why I like martinis, because it mixes the gin and the vermouth into a martini. So whenever you mix two uh, opposites, whenever you mix uh, two contradictory frames of reference, joy and pain, and when you bring them together in one, you have love. The romantic love, of course, is a mystical love. But, but also you have uh, compassion. So when you mix joy and pain together, you have compassion. Pa compassion is not joy, ha ha. It's, it's a, a mix of joy and pain that creates com the pain of suffering and the joy of serving it, the joy of not being separate from it. So in compassion, there is no separation of joy and pain because you are, you feel the pain of the other and because you become the pain of the other, you have the joy of not being separated from the other. So joy comes when there is union and in compassion and in romantic love, you are one with the beloved, you see. You're one with the beloved, so there's no separation. So the pain in romantic love comes when something tries to pro when time tries to pry you apart. In romantic love and in compassion, time does not exist. These are timeless, uh, and I don't want to say it's timeless being. You see. So let that be our little thought about the uh, Valentine's Day and why the arrow goes through the heart and why the heart cries in joy. See, a tear can be from joy or pain, you see. So the heart cries in joy because of its union with the beloved, you see. Uh, love is union with the beloved. Uh, compassion is union with the pain of the beloved. Okay? So love is, is a joyous union. Uh, Pain comes from the threat of its breaking apart, the experience of its breaking apart. Compassion is the joy that comes from being united with the pain of another. Let that be our Buddha in the landfill for today. And uh, for those of you that saw this previously, that's been erased. So this one will be posted so you can see it later. Have a great Valentine's Day. I'm having some steaks tonight in a martini. Thank you.